Okay, everybody. I'm just going to put together a really quick video that shows you how to help the kids with the uh, Code Monkey activity. Instructions on the left. Uh, you code in the middle, and the stage is on the right. As they do each step, they need to check whether they did it correctly, and they need to run to see whether their code is now working. In the first step, they want us to be able to move the sprite, and to do that, we're going to add this step movement to our on key function. Anytime a key is pressed, this function is called, and it does whatever code we put in here. So this is step one, which means it's going to move to the right, um, one pixel, one unit, every time a key is pressed. So let's try that real quick. Let's check it. Looks good. Let's run it. And basically follow the instructions and proceed to the next step. Now what we're doing is every time the key is pressed, we're checking to see which key was pressed. And depending upon which key is pressed, we're going to have the monkey do different things. As you'll notice, we're in the monkey's code. So right now, we have code that says if the left arrow was pressed, go backwards one. Well, we want to change it to where for the right arrow, we go forward once. Once again, you can type it in or you can use the different macros below. Press run. Now in this particular case, we're checking for three different keys. But for the up arrow, we're currently having the monkey move forward one. We don't want that. So we're going to take that out. We're going to put in our jump. You'll notice the at symbol. The at symbol means it's referring to the monkey, to himself. So the app basically means, hey, me, monkey, jump. Okay, some of these tasks will actually have the students drawing additional tiles, doing something on the stage. Nice. All right. Step five can be confusing for people. We're inside the monkey's code, but now we have this hippo. We want the hippo to move whenever the monkey does. So our syntax is a little bit different. When the left keyboard is pressed, we want the hippo to move. But I have to tell the code that it's the hippo that I'm talking about. So in this particular case, I want to have the hippo step. And I want the hippo to step backwards, just like the monkey does. And same thing on the right. So you can think of this as saying, hey, hippo, step. Step what? Forward one. Same thing. Whenever the monkey jumps, we want the hippo to jump. Well, we have to tell the code that we're talking about the hippo. Hey, hippo, dot, jump. And it needs those empty parentheses on the end. And now you can see, every time the monkey moves, the hippo does, does the same thing. Now it says get the monkey to the hippo. Just got to read carefully to go on to the next step. Here it says the function on collide is called when two sprites touch each other. And it wants us to fix the on collide function we see here to make the monkey jump. So we're in the monkey's code. Right now, when the monkey collides with the hippo, he goes back one. We don't want that. We're going to get rid of that. And we're going to have the monkey jump. Check it. Get the monkey to the hippo. Boom. Get the monkey the banana, and we're on to the next step. Seek and destroy. So we can add code that makes the monkey destroy itself, makes the banana destroy itself, or makes the banana destroy the monkey, all different types of things. It says, in the bananas code, fix the on collide function to destroy the banana. Okay? One thing I want to show you guys real quick is that any of these functions that you want to create, you can just do that. So no terrible typing necessary. Just use the macros and you'll get it right every time. And under display, you'll see that there's this destroy macro. What this is saying is that when the banana collides with the monkey, destroy the banana. Get the monkey to the banana. All right. Now it gets a little more complicated. We have the... Uh, Students actually add sprites. A sprite is basically just a plain old graphic we can give a name to. Take, take our banana, 
Put the banana in there. It says in the bananas code to find the on collide function with the monkey. And it says you can easily do this in the events tab. So just go to events, on collide. What's the banana colliding with in our code? The monkey. Update the on collide function with the monkey to destroy the banana. That's all we have to do, like we did before. Go to display, destroy. Now get the monkey the banana. When the monkey gets the banana, it should destroy the banana. All right. Ah, bonus. When the monkey gets a banana, make the monkey jump with excitement. All right. So let's stop our code. And all we have to do is make the monkey jump. So in that particular case, we say monkey dot jump. Because we have to say, hey, monkey, jump. Let's do it. All right, it says put your records on. We can play sounds in this too. We're gonna add a sound using this plus. Doesn't really matter what it is. I'm gonna use the collect coin sound and it wants us to name it to collect. All right, check it. Go to the sprites tab and in the bananas code, so make sure that you've clicked on the banana and that you look in the bananas code, you need to play the collect sound. The way you play a sound, take the name of the sound, in this case collect, and put play on the end, just like that. Now, yay, plays the sound, move on. Step 10, who let the tiger out? Let's make the game more challenging by adding obstacles. It says in the monkey's code, define the on collide function with the tiger. Okay, go to events, we're in the monkey's code, and choose on collide. When the monkey collides with what? The tiger, okay, and let's check that. When the monkey collides with the tiger, we want to set the monkey back to the corner. Um, this is a little bit different. Your X and your Y are up here in the upper left-hand corner. And you can, let's see here, movement, set X to zero, which will be all the way over here. And then you can set Y, the vertical axis, to, to zero, which will be up here. And as you hover, you can see that would be zero, zero. All right, get the monkey to the tiger. As you can see, every time sets it back to X zero, Y zero, the uh, zero, zero coordinate. All right, the tiger is getting restless. Let's make things a little more interesting. This is gonna show uh, students how to do a loop. So we gotta make sure the tiger selected in the tiger's code. We wanna make the tiger step forward 200 and back 200. So all we gotta do is do our step, add the negative 200, and get the monkey the banana. Whoops. Whoa. I suck. All right, on to step 12. Let's recap, add a tiger sprite, name it tiger, tiger. In the tiger's code, add a loop. Step 200 to step negative 200 inside the loop. Once again, these macros are really helpful. Loop is a control, because it controls the flow of the program. And then all we gotta do, go to our movements, step 200, step negative 200, tiger goes forward 200, goes back 200. In the monkey's code, define the on key function. You can do this easily, blah, 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 over here up here and then under your events you just do on key voila and then down here you can collide you can add the on collide function when the monkey collides with the tiger boom all right what do we want to happen when the monkey collides with the tiger place them back in the corner so just like we did before we are going to go to our movement and we're going to set X to zero and set Y to zero for the monkey. And check. Update the on collide function with the tiger to play the bump sound. So under sounds, we have one called bump right now. So when the monkey collides with the tiger, go all the way up here to the corner to zero, zero coordinate, and then play the bump sound. To play a sound, name of the sound dot play. 
So basically you're saying what's this is the bump object, call this method, basically do something. Hey bump, play. Clyde, and there is your bump sound. Get the monkey to the banana. All right, this sucks. Can't get over there. So this is where Colstock likes to cheat. Unless I bring my banana closer to me. Bring it down here or something. Move my tiger over. Gotta get creative sometimes. Uh-oh. That didn't work. Yay! <laughs> Cheater. All right, step 13. You can count on me. This shows uh, students how to work with variables and how to do incrementing and decrementing. It says, in the monkey's code, update the onCollide function, which is here, to add one to the counter. On the stage, you can see we've got this little counter right here. And it shows us exactly how to add to a variable. So right now, we have a counter called count. And so all we have to do is say count dot value and we need to add to it. So plus equals basically says take the value and add to it. So we're going to add one. Get the monkey to the hippo. Now every time <coughs> monkey collides with hippo, it will increment the counter. All right, that's annoying. Okay. Students can do the bonus if they want. They don't have to. Step 14. We're going to add a counter widget. So in this particular case, they didn't give us the counter. So we're going to go over here to plus. We're going to add a counter. And we're going to name it score. Then it wants us to update the onCollide function of banana high to add 200 points to the score counter. So we got to find our banana high, which is right here. And we need to update the score. So we have uh, score dot value and then plus equals is going to add to the existing value 200 or whatever we place here then we need to go banana low and we're going to do the same thing but you only get 100 points for getting that low hanging fruit just like in real life all right score dot value plus equals 100 and check it get the monkey of the banana 200 100 yay we're done okay last step add a banana sprite and name it banana one add the sprite choose a banana call it banana one do it again add a banana call it banana two separate these bananas in banana one's code to find the on collide function with the monkey so let's choose banana one and we can make our on collide function by doing this. Nice. And remember, we're not colliding with just any old sprite. We're colliding with the monkey. Update the on collide function to destroy the banana. So to destroy itself, all we have to do is go to display. And we can use this destroy method. Update the on collide function with the monkey to play the collect banana sound. So we already have the sound as part of our project. Remember, to play a sound, name of sound, dot play. You're basically saying, hey, collect banana, dot play. Do this thing. Update the onCollide function with the monkey to add points to the score. That's pretty simple. What is our counter called? It's called score. So we're going to say score dot value and then we can add to it whatever we want kind of like taylor did i'm going to add huge values because that's fun and then for banana 2 we got to do our on collide function as well because there's got to be something that happens when the monkey collides with it on collide with what monkey update the on collide function with the monkey to destroy the banana so once again we use our macros go to display destroy Update the onCollide function with the monkey to play the collect banana sound. Pretty straightforward. We need name of sound, collect banana, and then what are we telling it to do? Play, dude. Update the onCollide function with the monkey to add points to the score. 
Same thing. We figured out that this was called score. That's all we have to do. Hey, score. Increment your value. Plus equals tons. Get the monkey the banana. All right. At this point, um, students should be done. And what you're going to have them do, if they get that far, is click on the I'm finished with hour of code. And then you're going to have them put in their name. It's going to create the certificate. And then they're going to control C or command C this into their browser. And they're going to paste it, control V or command V, as a comment on the counseling page. Let me know if you have any questions, but hopefully that helps. I know it's a little long, but I know we all want to help the students um, when they struggle. And this is what it takes. So hope you guys have a great one. Thanks for all the help. I really appreciate it.